Hey guys, it's Ryder here with my Spider-Man Homecoming trailer number two official breakdown. Now, here we go. We got a brand new Spider-Man Homecoming trailer. Kind of just sprung upon us within the last few days. A lot of really cool posters, but it's about time, right? It's been like three, four-ish months since we've gotten a new trailer, and we are like somewhere along the lines of three and a half to four months away from the film actually coming out. What I really love about this trailer is that it just, it feeds the hype that I think everybody is really feeling and having right now, but it doesn't necessarily reveal way too much more of the story and, and some of the things that we already knew about it, and I really do love it, but at the same time, at the same time, while it doesn't reveal too much, it does kind of leave some hints and teases for things that will be playing out more so with these characters. More specifically, both Spider-Man and more importantly, the Vulture. Now, I say more importantly, the Vulture, because we've gotten some brand new details on this guy, on his backstory, what's going to make him a villain, and what could potentially make him one of the best Marvel villains that we've ever seen so far. And, you know, I, maybe I've said that before. Maybe, you know, you guys aren't, aren't necessarily buying into this because, you know, Marvel, the, at least the, the MCU, isn't known for having the greatest villains. But again, these, these details, these things, this actor of Michael Keaton could really change that. We start off in this trailer, and it's Peter Parker, and he's swinging around. He goes into this alley, puts on the spider suit, and what I really love about this shot here is that you could see, because, like, if you think about it, if you do think about it, the suit itself, we, we know it's so high-tech and all that, but let's just look at it like a piece of cloth. Even though it's not, let's just look at it like it's a piece of cloth, a piece of spandex, whatever, and he puts it on. It doesn't fit him necessarily at first, and I, I love that because, it again, it it just it, it drives some realism to the point where you could put on a suit or whatever you could you could you know say you have a suit right you could be a superhero but it's not necessarily going to fit you exactly and I do like that adjustments that he can make I think that's really cool and they are really focusing on the suit which is more important later in the trailer. And then we have that, that kind of shot that we did see in that first trailer uh, of Tony Stark and Peter Parker. They're talking in that limo or that car. And he's like, what is it, what's it going to take for me to become an Avenger? And Tony Stark drops the line, well, you know, I don't know. Just let's take it easy here. Just, you know, be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And uh, I, that was pretty cool, you know, obviously, because that's, that's Spider-Man. He is the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Like, that's, that's his title, you know, like the Cape Crusader for Batman or, you know, uh, Incredible Hulk or you know what it's like it was that's like Spider-Man's right uh, and we do get to see Spider-Man himself having some fun you know kind of swinging through people's pools and across buildings and next to buildings and I think the level of, of energy and fun that I think is missed from the the actual Spider-Man persona and in other Spider-Man movies will really heavily be portrayed. And I mean, like, in the Tobey Maguire's, like, I, I thought, I really enjoy those movies, honestly. Um, but if you do look at the Spider-Man from the comics and you compare it to the Spider-Man there, I'm talking more so the Spider-Man persona, not Peter Parker. It's a much more doled down version, right? It's just kind of like, you know, a typical superhero. When here in, in the Spider-Man Homecoming, you do have a, a character that is more accurate to the comics to the point where he is swinging. He is having a good time, even when he's like, you know, fighting and stopping you know, the, the city from being blown up or whatever. So I thought that was really cool also. Then we actually get to see some other cool things, and uh, starting off with Ned Leeds finding out, uh, again, we, we saw this in the first trailer, but Ned Leeds finds out uh, that uh, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and there's some funny scenes there. Uh, we, we, we see a, a really cool thing, Captain America, in this fitness challenge for a gym class. Holy shit. I mean, if, if the, that's, that's a way you do cameos. I almost feel like Stan Lee should almost, like, just take a page out of the notebook that, that came up with that idea because truly that's like one of the greatest cameos I think I've ever seen. So that was really awesome. That's really fun. And the fact that they also showed that off in the second trailer leads me to believe we will be getting a ton of Avengers Easter eggs and cameos. And I love that because, again, I'll talk more about this later, but it's like this movie is kind of like a, a smaller scaled culmination of everything in the MCU so far. And I know that sounds weird because it's not an Avengers movie, but it is, and I think that's really cool that they're able to do that.
Now we have Adrian Toomes, and he is he's pissed. Why is he pissed? Well, Tony Stark, it seems like the Stark industry is trying to take over his company. Now, uh, what's his company? Well, let, let's get we're, we're about to get into that. And this is what makes me think that the Vulture could be the greatest, one of the greatest, next to Loki and Thanos or whatever. Whatever. I, I think he could be up there as one of the best Marvel villains in the MCU so far. And this is because Get ready here. Yeah, I'll, uh, you, it's it's a big one. It seems to be that Adrian Toomes, before he's the Vulture, he runs the Damage Control Company. Now, what is Damage Control? What is da- and Look, why do I say Damage Control? Just off the bat, it is on the headlines of one of the news pieces that, that's in this trailer. So that's confirmation that they will be calling it Damage Control. What's Damage Control, you might ask? All right, l- l- let's, let's, let's take a step back here for a minute. In, in all the years, in all the years in the comic books that... The Marvel superheroes, any Marvel superhero has blown up or destroyed New York City or Chicago or L.A. or China or Mexico or Japan or whatever, a small little barn, right? Maybe they they destroyed a space shuttle trying to get to the moon. Maybe they go to the center of the earth, whatever, okay? Whatever in the hell, wherever, and they, they destroy something. Who has to clean up after them? Who cleans up that that mess and who rebuilds that part of the city or the universe or whatever, okay? That would be this group called the Damage Control. They there are just some really highly skilled construction workers. There there's a lot of logistics behind it. We we're, we're just going to, you know, go basics here and they go ahead and they clean up after basically every superhero. You know, when the Avengers destroy New York City, what do they do? They clean up after that. You know, when when the when Sokovia is ripped out of the ground, what do they do? They clean clean up after that uh civil war of that airport they probably cleaned up after that right they they that's what they do okay and adrian Toomes supposedly has been running this so stark comes in here he wants to take a part in this company buy over this company and it seems like in this whole time throughout all the times that adrian Toomes has been kind of scavenging and uh cleaning up after all these superheroes he has been collecting pieces of technology and metal to build his wings and that's kind of like that's why he is called the vulture it's so clever and it's so it's so compelling because it seems like hey this is a guy who needs this job who's created this company or whatever and along along the lines and you know he only does clean up after you know tony stark and his superhero friends and then tony stark has the nerve to come in here and try to take over his company to try to just take something that's his and he's got a daughter that's got cancer i know they haven't really talked about that in the trailers yet but that is a big part of him in the comics and i don't, i think they will be going that route so bottom line is i love this it really do show the perfect amount of the vulture in this trailer he's kind of flying around he he's doing the things that that we know that the vulture will do he destroys that boat and or whatever that whatever that thing is that shuttle or whatever uh the water shuttle i don't know what it's really called but whatever that that's not important he he cuts through it in half and peter parker spider-man he's there and he's like oh no and this is that really great action set piece that we did get to see in that last trailer where he's pulling the, the boats together but he can't do it. We all see that he's on the cusp of the whole thing just going to shit. So who's got to show up? Well, that would have to be none other than Iron Man. And this was really awesome because I love Iron Man and Civil War. But I look at this movie and I just I get those Iron Man vibes and feels. And this to me, in a sense, and especially when I see Iron Man kind of, you know, encroach upon that boat, right? Just that up close shot. I'm like... What? This is almost like an Iron Man 4. And I, I don't I know that it could be a negative thing, but at the same time, I love Iron Man. I love Tony Stark. He's what has made this MCU what it is. So I do, I really do like to see him in these in this light. And he basically he saves the day. But that's not the end of that story because then he he hops out of his suit, which is so awesome, and he's like, you know, what are you doing? Someone could have gotten killed, Peter. What, what, what were you thinking? And he's like, I'm going to need the suit back. And then Peter's like, no, I had it. You know, I need the suit. I'm nothing without the suit. And then he's like, well, if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. Such a great line. And I, I really, I don't know. I, I know the writers are from Vacation, right? That movie wasn't anything special. But I really do like the writing here. I think it's good writing and I think it's fun writing. But it's deep. And it's like... Like, you know, again, they focus so much on the suit in all these promo art and online video campaigns or whatever. They've got the social medias and in the trailers, they headline the suit. And that the suit's obviously what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. 
But I think what they're going to get at in this movie is that it's not as much about the suit and what you wear. It's more about who's underneath and what that person means. And we're going to see Peter Parker wear his original suit, it seems like, for the whole third act final battle, which I really love because it, it, it's not relying on Tony Stark. And that's one thing that I really hope this movie doesn't do. I, I You heard me say it. I love Iron Man. I love Tony Stark. I loved getting to see him in this. It felt like Iron Man 4 in, in a little bit. But at the same time, I want him to just be in like a couple scenes, maybe impactful scenes, but just a few scenes here or there. This movie needs to be able to stand on its own two feet without Iron Man. And I love the Avengers. I, I love getting to see that. I love how this is, again, like I said, a smaller scaled culmination of the whole MCU. But at the same time, I want Spider-Man things to be happening in this movie. And uh, I, I think they're going to need to rely on some of the Avengers and all that to kind of, you know, kickstart this thing to let everybody know that, hey, this is a brand new Spider-Man world in franchise that is in the MCU, but I still, I don't want them to rely on it too heavily. I want this to stand on its own two feet and be able to breathe. It looks great though. You know, I'm completely behind my my hero, which is Spider-Man, and I'm completely behind my villain, which is Vulture. And this is a first in quite a while. I love Doctor Strange, but let's be real. I don't necessarily think that we were all we were all behind uh Kaecilius, right? And in in Civil War, I don't know if we were all behind Zemo. Uh I in, in maybe Age of Ultron. I don't know if we were all behind Ultron. Here here I come in this to, into this thing, and I just see the vulture, and I see a man, and I see I see Spider Man, and I see a boy, and I see. But really, I just see people. I see people with real stakes in this really superhero filled world, and how are they going to handle that? And this, to me, is even in 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 a world in in a year like 2017 where we've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, when we've got Thor Ragnarok. Spider-Man Homecoming takes the cake for my most anticipated because it's real. It feels real even though it's superhero, and that's what I really love to get out of my superhero films. A more kind of, you know, it, in a point where, you know, I can I can, you know, escape, but it also it feels like, hey, this this could be real. And I do I do love that. Uh, don't get me wrong though, I'm super pumped for Guardians and super pumped for Thor, but this to me is probably my most anticipated Marvel film. You guys let me know your thoughts on this trailer. What did it leave you with? What is your most anticipated Marvel film? of this year i know it's really tough so you know choose wisely but uh, very cool things and I, I love this whole damage control backstory if you guys want some more videos or some more details on that you guys got to let me know in the comments i'd be more than happy to talk about it and do them i'll be doing a bunch of other great spider-man homecoming videos before the film comes out in just a few months so be subscribed to get that thanks so much for watching and i'm a writer signing off with infinite attitude and keep writing guys bye